Mark Stein is an author and a columnist, and also, by the way, a Canadian, so he knows what a moral <laughs> frenzy looks like. He joins us tonight. Mark, I've never seen liberals so mad. You would have thought someone lit a cigarette in a restaurant or forgot to recycle. I mean, that level of rage. You have to take this seriously, Tucker. That Trump punk <laughs> kid is heading for the electric chair. If it's good enough for the Rosenbugs, it's good enough for this kid. <laughs> Uh, needless to say, I agree, as a responsible newsman. <laughs> That's um, right. Look, well, what's interesting here is actually the, the right has met the left halfway on this. I, I have an awful lot of respect for Charles Krauthammer. Yes. But when he says that uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s words, I love it, in the email, is evidence of collusion, the guy he's colluding with is a washed-up pop music publicist. He was the publicist for John Denver in the 1980s. Not the American publicist, not the British publicist, he was the Australian publicist for John Denver in the 1980s, since when he's progressed to becoming the publicist for an untalented Azerbaijani pop star who happens to be the son of a very minor Z-list oligarch. Now, I'm sure you, like I, follow the Azerbaijani hit parade uh, closely, as closely as CNN does. It's uh, 17 with a bullet on CNN's morning show. Uh, I'm sure you follow the Azerbaijani hit parade super closely, but if you were going to collude, I'm not sure even under the Espionage Act, it's possible to bring a prosecution for someone colluding with the publicist for an Azerbaijani pop singer. I've read the statute, I can't find that in there. But, I mean, what you've described is a crime against good taste, colluding mm. with the Australian publicist for the late John Denver. Right. right. But I, I wonder how... <laughs> Sunshine on my shoulder makes CNN's morning show very happy. <laughs> Indeed it does. Mm. But I wonder how much of the outrage is real, and is there anything at the bottom of this? Do the Trump people have anything to worry about? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think the danger here, well, it's really a clash between two cultures, Tucker, because uh, one of the uh, disfiguring aspects of uh, American political life is that it's very reactive. It's very rear view mirror. Yes. So uh, everybody's extremely happy. Then nobody can prevent 9-11, uh, but uh, we're happy to investigate it for years afterwards, have a blue ribbon commission, issue a 400 page report, years and years and years of investigation. Now they want to do the same thing with a meeting uh, that uh, the president's son, a perfectly legal meeting, held with the, the president's son held with a Russian lawyer. Now, that's reactive and legalistic and pointless. Uh, Putin, on the other hand, is a great improviser. So even if this lawyer had no links to the Kremlin uh, two weeks ago, she most certainly has uh, links to the Kremlin now because she's in line for the Order of Lenin or whatever they have these days, uh, for, just simply for sowing this amount of confusion and chaos in American life, which well, actually so is... You're making, that's the point right there. That's such a smart point that nobody is making, mm -hmm. which is if you think Putin's goal is to destabilize American politics... Right. Aren't we offering it up to him, that opportunity, the greatest opportunity ever offered to him? Yes, it's win-win either way. And we, all, and we know, uh, by the way, that this is the, what, what's happening here is just the routine interaction that goes on uh, everywhere across the planet in the last 20 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. People who were uh, Soviet commissars 25 years ago have mysteriously become multi-billionaires. And you run into them all over the planet. Uh, in London, they own football clubs and newspapers, the respectable ones. The unrespectable ones uh, have lawyers whose helicopters mysteriously crash uh, a quarter of a mile before landing at the oligarch's English castle that he bought. And the oligarchs complain all the time that they have no idea whether the people who purport to be influential in the West... I had an oligarch said to me, I mean, this is, uh, you know, uh, that's a great conversational gambit, by the way, if you want to go into a singles bar, Tucker, and say, uh, this Russian oligarch said to me the other day, because it shows, shows the chick you're a person of influence and collusion right there. But Works this the oligarch Hamptons. said to me a couple of years ago, uh, the first thing that happens when you land in a Western city is people are always claiming they can perform services for you. 
you. Uh, they yeah. tell you, oh, you know, I'm the third son of a Viscount or I'm Elton John's uh, accountant. And you have no way of knowing which of all these people who claim to be able to perform services for you actually can do. We have here a situation where uh, an Azerbaijani pop publicist uh, is claiming to be the cutout between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. Now, I'm all for deep cover, but if it is the case that Vladimir Putin knows enough to hire the publicist of an absolutely untalented Azerbaijani pop singer, and I have no disrespect, by the way, I don't want a hate crimes prosecution, uh, the Azerbaijani entry won the Eurovision uh, Song Contest in the year 2011. So I'm all, I, go, I support Azerbaijani uh, pop music, I'm all for it, but I don't want Azerbaijani pop publicists uh, diversifying into cutouts between Putin and Trump because they're unlikely to be very good at it. The cast of characters is, it is. unbelievable. It's like closing time in the sleaziest bar in Stad. That's, you know, that's right. It is. It's is the closing closest, somebody else. It's the sleaziest bar in Baku, uh, which I, I think is the... <laughs> If I'm right, that's the capital of Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan, I never quite buy because it ought to be, it's Muslim, so it ought to be a stan. But all the stan names are taken, so it had to become a jan. But if you're in Baku and you want to become a, uh, a pop singer, uh, a sleazy bar in Baku is a good place to find a couple of Baku singers, Tucker. There we are. <laughs> The Mission great accomplished. <laughs> you don't get this coverage on the CNN morning show. No, you don't, and that's why we're winning. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Appreciate Thanks, it. Tucker.